Good evening, everyone. So, uh, yeah. This, is, this set of slides is not the actual slide that we presented to developers. So this is sort of like behind the scene kind of, kind of version of the slides, okay? So uh, if you have the experience of living in one of those stratified uh, high rises, you know that you are actually sort of living in a submarine. Meaning that you're gonna enjoy the view maybe for five minutes and you're gonna enjoy the interior of your house or stay inside for the rest for the uh, next 10 hours before you go to work again. So, sometimes you go to your window and peek outside and then maybe you see something. So, uh, and you retreat to the interiors that, you know, might look like this. So, or more closer like this, okay? Uh, so, we know that they don't look good because they are not designed together. I mean, the clothes are designed by someone else, manufactured by someone else, the house designed by someone else. Everything are designed by a lot of uh, parties. And this is a problem where we saw that the things inside your house is a byproduct of industrial design or you know, product design. And your house is uh, sort of like architecture or spatial design, which is a problem of architecture trying to contain more progressive art, which is industrial design, in the sense that they move faster, they innovate faster. You might own a house for 35 years to finish up your loan, but by then you have like thousands and thousands of clothes already. So I, I, we thought that the battle will be in the interior, okay? Obviously not, compared to uh, um, evident by the, pre, the first two, where people actually enjoy their home. But to do this competition, we kind of have to do a bit of architecture, so we kind of do the external or the architecture part as a vessel. Of course, the architecture will contribute back to the interior and we'll see how. I think this is not new. Again, there's some movement like this still that try to curate everything, you know, from what kind of art you could have in the house to furnitures. More extreme example, uh, every element is a functional element, the floor, the wall and the orientation is not that important. I mean, when the space station rotated, it still works. And the most important thing is, as astronaut goes up there, they can update certain modules, they can do renovation, okay? And we are also heavily influenced by IKEA. And this is like our small office. This is IKEA AIVA, which also more or less built on the same system. We use it as a partition or wall kind of thing. So if you have a typical unit, which the wall has plaster on both sides, you're gonna have this footprint uh, taking up the space that you bought. So if you buy 900 square feet house, you might be able to enjoy 750, okay? So on top of that, you add furniture, and now it increased to this 450 uh, footprint. And then re further reducing your 750 hard earned square feet into maybe, I don't know, 600 or even less than that. So we want to do, what we want to do is that you want to get rid of all internal walls and then use furniture as high performing uh, elements that has function and also divides uh, the space. So, okay. So they could be updated by the sections just like your app. Some apps has frequent updates, some don't. So it is more or less thinking about how to create that dimensional stability so we can change that, we change them and also update them where we need to. We look a lot, uh, we look at product design, industrial design, where each component will have their own specific function. In this particular case, we're proposing even customized uh, H HVAC unit customized uh, kitchen unit in order to get the house running. So we propose, this is not in the original slide, okay, so we propose Gamuda to be more vertically integrated. Now they are in this three business, they just recently go into IPS, uh, building component manufacturer, of course. We ask them, maybe they can go down here into interior and furniture fitting, fittings and whatnot. 
and go down to utensil app and appliances. Okay, so you can see the scale. So the, the model is more or less like Red Bull. Red Bull like do everything, even though it's an energy drink company, but they have a F1 racing team. They have a school, they have fashion line. Uh, they have, you know, have almost every business, there will be a stain of Red Bull. So it will look more or less like this. Gamuda branded spoon, with Gamuda branded spoon container, with Gamuda branded, I don't know, um, cutlery uh, base, in a Gamuda made cabinetry, and of course flooring. So it becomes clear to us the idea is not really architecture, we don't really actually care about the physical look of it, because based on this idea they can like go wherever they want to go. It's, it's a, not proposing an architecture, it's a mass domestic architecture, uh, the way to think about mass domestic housing. So that's why we don't submit a project, we submit a document, which we call Gamuda New Housing Framework, GNHF. So there is few uh, principles, but I will just gonna focus on these three, which is the first one, we will make the interior free of any wall, so you can move your wall, okay? We will make furniture as wall, so I create this term, super net, I'm sure you're familiar with carpet area, but carpet area does not deduct the amount of space that furniture occupy. Super net is like the actual, actual space you're able to enjoy. So like 800, oh sorry, like a six, uh, 900 square feet uh, apartment where you can enjoy, actually you can enjoy like 400 uh, something square feet. And the last one is uh, standardization. Everything is built by one manufacturer rather than multiple uh, manufacturers. And of course using BIM as a tool to cut wastage. So we start with this, by, visit, by after visiting their plan, we know that there is certain dimensional restriction and we start to, you know, just go crazy what we can do with this modulated uh, dimensions and eventually we go with this because it has such a low profile and also the idea of making it a little bit more uh, permeable. So I think we'll just skip this, it doesn't bear much significance. This is the site, of course, this is the sort of courtyard house, uh, courtyard block we're trying to do. The car park will be on the ground and the first floor, fronted by shops or retails. And this is how the units look like. Uh, we have 20 something units, but since we are a small practice, so we're gonna simulate only one. Okay, so you're gonna show, we're gonna show in detail one of those units. So the, the block is not that high, you can see that the shop frontage on the ground, this is the bridge connecting to a nearby MRT station. And then it goes up another few stories. So the whole thing is only eight stories, it's very low. And the pixelated facade, you can see that they are helping to shape one another. So this is how it looks like. It looks very uh, interlocking. And you can see that uh, the, uh, each unit will have at least two of this, two small uh, balcony. This is like two meter by two meter. I think two meter by two meter, it's quite huge. And even though everything is made of a similar volumetric uh, mass, at certain point where the corner meets, it creates this quite special silhouette that you know almost uh, make it look like it was organically designed and then softly go dissipate to the sky. Okay, uh, the, the facade, which is one of the important part. Uh, one way to do it is to use volumetric structural component and it will look like this of course knowing the question that will come after that we make a you know economical version where we include a, sort of a composite uh, panel which is include a steel structure there so that we can have the load go directly down the idea was to make sure that the steel structure blend together with the rest of the window frame or window wall frame this is more economical version, obviously. This is RC flat panel with uh, two uh, fenestration. And then uh, try to address the load on the cantilevered part. This is like versions, which they can scale up or scale down. Eventually, the range of sort of catalog 
we look more or less like this as a range of you know how much uh, uninstructed view do you you know do you value your uninstructed view so this is like you choosing your periscope certain periscope is clearer than the rest certain periscope has more range than the other this is the middle part which uh, you know in the in the particular courtyard basically it rows from level two four and up to seven so you know, just after this floor this is already sky so it's not like super uh, it's not going to be dark first of all and you can enjoy the range of facilities in you know in this particular floor which goes up to level three four so you can be connected at all time to your uh, what do you call it uh, common facilities in regardless of where you are so for example uh, the playground is at level four it's connected to the common uh, corridor on both sides which almost all of the neighbors can you know uh, have a uh, have a view of the children and of course surau management office barbecue pit etc etc the components that yeah they are just that and then the beam which yeah i think all of us know we, we don't have to talk about that too much and also the interior portion we actually try to build a range of uh, interior components as a family and then in order to get the idea of mass replicating them through through a base of framework so this is the basic uh what i call it version 1.0 of those framework okay with different depth and width and basically all these things just based on this particular set of base we can create doors sliding doors folding doors cabinetry uh you know uh, wardrobe and what else is uh, the, the, the possibility is infinite so when when you're done you can you know pick and choose put into a house it's sort of like play dollhouse again and basically after you're done it will look something like that to be full up you can see that how uh, the actual permanent wall is just the external party wall and also the bathroom and eventually if you are thinking of moving out to somewhere or you want to let go of your parts you can switch it up if you buy another g and a half house somewhere you could bring your component there as well or you can sell to your neighbors because it works the architecture is designed uh, to conform to the framework so it will not have that 5 mm 10 mm left over if you do just you know silicon uh, they are also uh, de designed in zigzag uh, shape in order to give you the best opportunity to get you know your sunlight everything that is needed under ubbl of course uh, okay, ways to do it. We're actually te teaching them how to do it. Uh, of course, if you have all this uh, regulatory document, you cannot like easily change your your the things, right? And also, of, of course, you don't want to be binded by the layout because you know residents tend to change their mind. If you in SPA, the ship is like this, then suddenly they have two two child while waiting for the building to be completed in three years, then it's quite it's quite hard. So we say. The SPA will have you know the same drawing as per the BP drawing, gonna be like basic empty unit, and we're gonna supplement that with a benefits package, just like your pantry, your aircon, whatever things that developer gave these days, right? And we're gonna give them a credential. We also make a fake app, by the way. So <laughs> you can log in into the app. But we don't have a QR code, huh? sorry. Uh, so let's say mother of two at gmail.com with password. You can choose whichever. Okay, let's say in this particular case, we show your PBT, the locality, and eventually the neighborhood. Let's say it's Hypujaya. And then choose your unit. Of course, you can, like, you know, orbit through. Okay. And then after that, you can choose your pre, pre made layout because we know that. Not all of us are, uh, you know, uh, not all of us have the time or have the expertise to customize our own home. And then, based on that pre pre, pre designed layout, you can like go one section by one section and pick out your fit up. 
Okay, so you could do this. Uh, I think, yeah, even when the VP is almost nearing, you can like confirm last minute. And then what happens is that the information will go into a server, and then we have to create an interface between the, that survey thingy into a BIM software that can be read by Gamuda IBS factories to cut the planks. Okay? And you can install on the side. Now, like honestly, it could be almost anything you could imagine. So it has a longer lifespan in terms of, it could be an office even, a startup office, I think we showed one. And the idea is, knowing now the market is so slow, the idea is to create a product that has a little bit of uh, flexibility in terms of positioning. You can position as a co-housing, you can position as a transit house, whatever you want to call it, with the idea of uh, having this flexible uh, layout. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, thank you.